Auto guns, the only gun in the Imperium that has mass produced more than the last gun, and one that is extremely prevalent in Warhammer 40k Darktide, but how does it stack up to the competition? In this video today, we're going to break down each of the three auto gun types and discuss which is the best in each category as well as the best for each class. We'll then conclude the video with my overall thoughts on the auto guns as they compare to guns such as last guns, bolters, etc. As mentioned, auto guns are broken into three categories hip fired braced auto guns automatic rifle infantry guns, and lastly the DMR style single shot or burst headhunter auto guns. They each have specific use cases that can thrive in the hands of either the zealot or the veteran. We won't be reviewing this in the hands of the psyker because you're not going to use that, you're just going to use a staff. Within each category are three different types or marks. Braced and infantry have Agrippina, Graia, and Columnus guns, while the headhunter has Vrax Mark III and Mark VII, as well as the Agrippina as well. We'll start out with an overall discussion of how damage is done with auto guns before breaking into each category to go a little bit more in depth. You can jump ahead to any part of the video that interests you the most using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitch as I stream Dark Tide Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday every week. We do community matches, giveaways, and I ramble about a lot of dumb stuff. Lastly, if you end up enjoying the video, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. Each one of those helps out any content creator you watch in a huge, huge, huge way. But let's get started on the ultimate guide to auto guns in Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Loading us into the game, let's talk about how the damage is done for auto guns. Now we're looking at the infantry auto gun in this example, and this applies to more than just auto guns. Um, more guns take advantage of this, but there are so many different little tiny factors. I just want to give you a general rule of thumb of how this actually works and to make you, or at least not make you, not make you, but help you understand how damage, stopping power, all those these things kind of factor together. So I want you to take a look first at your primary action. This says 132. Uh, these two numbers are always going to be the same, really, um, for this uh, specific gun. That Think of that as your base damage. That's the raw damage that this gun does based off of whatever factors are underneath the hood. So 132. When you hover over damage, though, you'll see that damage versus unarmored, which is your groaners, your scabs, uh, I'm sorry, your dregs, stuff like that, or damage versus invested, which is your pox walkers. You're going to see two sets of values. Your near, which is anything from 0 to 15 meters, and then far, which is anything... 35 meters plus and i'll explain that just a little bit here what you want to look at though are those two damage values so damage versus unarmored is 104 percent it doesn't mean you're doing 104 percent additional damage it means you're doing four percent additional damage or 4.62 if you want to think of it that way let me show you this in in action so 132 is our base right here is a dude right in front of us shooting right in the chest 130 Eight. Now, if I take 132 and add 4% to it, it's around 137, 138, just kind of depending upon where I've shot him. Clearly, I've shot him directly in the chest. You can shoot stuff like the hands. You can see it does less damage there, right? Let's kill him and reset this. So now I'm going to show you what happens when we go to 15 meters. Run, 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 run. So pretty much we're at 15 meters. And this is kind of a rough estimate, right? Because we're not directly marking him like this, where we would, well, if I mark him, I see exactly where he is at. <clears throat> Still 138. I'm going to go right past that. This should go to, this should go to about one. He moved back a little bit, so it should be about one or two points less. Cool. So 136. So for every meter you are beyond 15 meters, you will do one point less damage until you reach this value which is far far is from what i can gather is 35 meters and you will do 83 percent of 132 that is your max damage fall off for a gun with these values all kind of listed out for you so let's go ahead and kill this guy real quick 83 percent of 132 is 109.56 so we're marking this here let's run back and remember man 35 meters is a real far distance you can see how far back i'm going here here's 36 oh god i can't even see him okay so he's right about there so 116 87 it seems to always have like a little bit of an interval so it, it's not an exact number here I can't necessarily get it to be totally exact, but I, I know that after 35 meters, our damage will stop falling off. 
So those are kind of the numbers that float around when you're looking at this stuff because you also have certain things to take into consideration like fire frenzy or perks, all sorts of stuff that will kind of factor into it. But this is to kind of give you general rules of thumb here, right? Um, these numbers should help you get a good idea of how this damage equates for all the guns you're looking at so that you don't look, look at them and go, okay, well, I don't really know what these near and far values really mean. You're roughly doing percentages of this primary action. And this does also factor into stopping power, which has the exact same type of values. And you'll see a lot of this reflected here too. If you look at the primary actions and attack patterns, you'll see, okay, infested uh, or unarmored, I know I'm doing 138, and I shoot to shoot them to the body, which we saw when we took a shot at them, right? Was 138. So if you don't really, you don't need to memorize these things or anything like that, but it's just me trying to break down how all this works because this is how I did a lot of my testing to see how uh, damage equated across distances and whatever have you, blah, 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 blah. But this is an unnecessarily complex portion of the video. You could have just skipped this part, but still I wanted to explain it so that you have an understanding for other guns as you move forward in Dark Tide. The first set of auto guns I want to talk about, though, are the braced auto guns. Now, ignore the rolls on all these things because, yes, they will change depending upon the gun you've got. But we're talking more about the overall use case and the effectiveness of these auto guns rather than the actual specific damage stats or stability, all these things. So when you take a look at the Gria braced auto gun. You're looking at the braced auto gun that does the least amount of damage. If I hover over the damage portfolio here or, or modifier here, you'll see at the bottom it says 75 to 105. That is the lowest amount of damage. The rate of fire says 11.11 .11 seconds. It doesn't seem to truly be that. I think it's just a slight bit higher than that actual number. Because looking at the way the Gria Brace Auto Gun fires, it seems to shoot differently than the Columnus, which is right above it. The Agrippina is the fast, is the highest damage, lowest firing uh, braced auto gun. So they kind of have that kind of progression point. So lowest damage, highest fire rate is in the Gria, then moves up the, to the Agrippina from there. The biggest differences from the Gria to the Columnus are in the collateral rating collateral here gives us stagger for unyielding and maniac the columnus is going to give us stagger versus flak which i'll show you off and i'll show off in just a little second here um, also if we look at uh stability braced fire recoil and braced fire moving recoil are different on the columnus they have a different max value so you want this number to be lower not higher as you can see it shows you the interval 1.93 to 0.37 it's at 52 percent roll so it's at 1.09 um, but the ammo size for the clip or well, magazine and ammo reserve are both exactly the same on both guns as well. So what this kind of comes down to is like, what is the actual use case of the Gria? And the Gria definitely kind of feels almost like a better shredder auto pistol as far as its run and gun type of mentality. You can see here that I'm kind of just ripping through stuff with a much larger ammo magazine. I almost said clip. And... It does also have its braced fire mode, right? Which allows me to really kind of hone in a lot more damage. You can see its rate of fire is far faster than the Columnus, which I'm about to show you. And if I crouch, I also get the ability to shoot more. What I've noticed here, though, is that between the two, the Gria has a better ability to stay moving and hit and use the braced firing and staying with a tight cone of fire versus the Columnus or the Agrippina, this tends to get much wider, much faster. So it can mow things down. It's a very reliable horde clearing weapon, but suffers when it starts to hit into any kind of true flak here, right? I mean, it took a whole entire clip to kill that guy and that's 56 shots, give or take. Let's do it with the actual full clip. So 30 shots, that's not a reliable weapon that you're really going to want to use in Damnation. And, and everything here is marked for Damnation. I have this thing, the, the Cycanium set to Damnation. So kind of using this on anything that's a harder target, especially over here, man, like you're just not, you're not going to do anything to this stuff. And that's kind of to be expected with a 
auto gun, carapace is going to be the hardest thing to really do reliable amounts of damage to. And if we look at this against your actual uh, specials, it takes a lot of time to really kill anything that you're going to be dealing with um, reliably. Because if I'm trying to kill that sniper, let's try to wait for him to respawn. I want him to have full health. This is 10 meters away, 11 meters away, 12. It, it takes a little bit to really kind of keep get him down. And then the tumult of battle, I'm not going to be able to hit this guy reliably at 20 meters while also being beset on all sides. Now, what does this look like when we switch over to the Columnus, which is, again, just a step up in the actual um, damage profile thing. So looking at this, we're having an 87 to 122 damage interval. Just as a comparison point, the Gryah had 75 to 105 damage. So we already are doing, on just a base level, more damage than the uh, Gryah at 87 to 122. And we look, too, at the collateral. We're now doing stagger versus flak armor, as you can see. The values here are the same, 129 for unyielding and for flak. Um, and maniac, uh, I'm 129, that's max value, by the way. Uh, maniac, we're looking at 67.55. That was the same thing on the uh, Gryah as well. Ammo reserves, like I said, exactly the same. Mobility, so moving spread as well as braced fire recoil and braced fire moving recoil are now different here, right? So let's take a look at how this looks compared to our Gryah, which was again a much faster firing gun. And you'll see here too, this fires just slightly slower, not a huge ton slower. And you can also see as we move and fire, the crosshair really gets wild, wild really fast. It gets pretty big. And we're dealing with two in, in this specific role, one less shot. So just kind of ignore that ammo pool. Because like I said, it's the same amount of reserve and, and per magazine. Just depends on your role. So what you're getting though now is the ability to start staggering and really kind of suppressing into flak armor. A little bit more reliably than Gryia. I don't really find Gryia to have a particularly good use case compared to Columnus and Agrippina, especially with Agrippina being really the boss of the whole entire braced autogun section. The Columnus has got kind of a wonkopotamus little uh, shooting here. If I start to unbrace and shoot, you can see that that crosshair gets pretty wild pretty fast. And yeah, it does really great against unarmored, right? Kind of all right against flak. It takes quite a lot of shots to kill those things. And then I Let's just, just, just to show, it's just not going to do damage to Carapace, man. Like, that's, that's not the role of this weapon. Now, let's move to the very last one on the list. It's the Agrippina. And the Agrippina is my personal favorite and the, the top pick for braced auto guns and for both Zealot and the, um, what am I playing as? A veteran sharpshooter. So with the braced auto gun equipped, I'm going to show you a feat setup you can use to really take advantage of this. So we're going to switch our feats around. We're going to make sure to have tactical reload to increase our, our weapon reload. We're going to use one after another to have 30% reload speed on elite kill. And we're going to switch to counter fire, which I will almost never take. I almost always go for sustained fire because I like the rapid reload and I like replenishing the toughness. It's a really nice ability, but I'll show you how counter fire can really be used to amazing effect with the Agrippina braced auto gun, and it's where I think the, the auto gun really shines. So, much slower, right? But we're looking at a higher stagger rate, much higher stagger rate through the roof, even. <laughs> Miss all your shots, too, and you'll notice that it, it's really going to crush things. Let's look at the weapon stats real quick, too. So, looking at this, our damage value is now 125 to 175. So that, that bait, the our lowest damage value is higher than the Gryas highest damage value, I believe. And its mobility, the moving spread now is much different. And the uh, stability for the braced fire recoil and braced fire moving recoil is also much different too. For the ammo reserve, we have a much lower ammo reserve and our clip size, again, it's a magazine, is also different. Our top end is 45, whereas it was much higher for the Columbus and the Gryia before. Stopping power, though, has been swapped for collateral. So no longer do we do stagger damage against flak, unyielding, and maniacs. We do, uh, we do actual damage against them. So remember, at 163 as our base action cost, we're doing 80% damage within 15 meters to someone wearing flak armor or 
We're doing a 7% damage bonus to an unyielding or 7% damage bonus versus maniac. So we now actually can do real damage to things outside of soft targets. That is what makes this such a standout weapon against its other two bros, especially when you're playing in damnation because I can reliably kill flak armor without having to really worry about it. So we took about 30 shots to kill a mauler before. Not gonna lie to you, that's not that much better, right? <laughs> that's 20 shots still. So you get the point that this thing does suffer from really kind of slowing down with flak armor and uh, it's really not gonna do anything against carapace. Now, if I were to, let's go ahead and pop this guy back there because I need you to show something off. If I were to pop into my alt, I have plenty of ways to keep this alt up now because I do so much good damage to unarmored things to to gunners and gunners now reset this alt so all these things over here would also reset the alt it makes it so that the agrippina braced auto gun fits very well into the hands of a zealot because you can almost use it like a true shredder pistol that does a great amount of damage you can run and gun you can play it from the hip and it's really fun but i think using it in the hands of the uh veteran sharpshooter with the alt is great especially if you're just kind of taking out these gunners now which are helping to keep your all active and with your damage bonuses against these things you can either stagger them or put yourself in a position where you're going to actually do the damage to finish them off or like i said stagger them and knock them off balance it's actually a much more competent build when i first went to make this video i was going to say the braced the braced auto gun the agrippina is just so much better on the zealot but this build really makes it work pretty well with the veteran sharpshooter let's move over to the infantry auto gun now now we move into the infantry auto guns which are very weird because before we went from Graia to columnus to agrippina now we're going to go columnus Graia, and then Ag agrippina i don't know why it's like that but for some reason the columnus in the infantry auto gun section has the highest fasting rate fasting rate has the highest fire rate with the lowest damage and that's kind of we're going to follow pretty much a roughly very similar blueprint where the damage here is 75 to 105 at its max and minimum intervals stability here with hip fire recoil going to be the same for pretty much every single version of the infantry auto guns but it's the aim down sight recoil and moving recoil which is going to change with each one as we start to move up um, also we're going to be seeing some other values here as we move into ammo which is going to also change from gun to gun as we move up the lane the line uh the lane but here's a big difference the stopping power is now on every single infantry auto gun where stopping power was only on the braced agrippina auto gun so it kind of tells me that the intended use case of the columnus and the Graia braced auto guns is more for suppression and stagger that's what collateral is meant for versus stopping power allows you to do damage to all weapon pro or sorry to all armor profiles so there's a little bit of a difference here so let's take a look at the columnus here it's going to be pretty hot and wild as we switch into it and i don't have a very good stability one but still you can see that fire rate is through the roof we're doing tons and tons and tons of damage we'll just shoot from the hip which this gun does not thrive at. Look how huge that uh, reticle gets. The infantry auto gun is really supposed to be aimed down the sight and shoot. And I, I think truly the way to do it is not to just hold it down. It's to do it in kind of semi-controlled bursts for each target. You're definitely going to want a good stability roll, though, on one of these, which if you decide to go with columnus, or, uh, yeah, columnus. <laughs> um, does great enough damage to unarmored, which is just fine and dandy. But I think especially when you're looking at damnation a 41 round magazine with the total amount of ammo reserve you're going to burn through ammo far faster than you're actually going to do true damage looking at a carapace armor even with stopping power it just does a ton of time to hit to care uh, hit the flak on that sorry this is carapace which i've messed up but still just takes a long time to really kind of hit true with it now, if we switch into the Graia, we get a really good kind of mid-ground infantry gun, where the infantry gun starts to really pick up some steam. And I don't think that the, I think the infantry guns of all three categories of auto guns are in the weirdest place right now.
So looking at the damage, our interval is now 75 to 105, which matches the columnus. We have a mobility here, which has a different moving spread than our columnus. This is 38 to 32, whereas the columnus is 33 to 29. And if we move into ammo reserves, we're looking at 20 to 40, whereas uh, the columnus had 25 to 45 and our ammo pool is 160 to, to 320 versus the 200 to, three, to 360 we had before and stability with the aim down sight recoil that's the biggest one that's the one that changes with each and every one of these is going to be very different as well because we're looking at uh, on the Graia, 5.4 to 102 and 8.7 to 1.9 versus the columnus had 4.3 to 0.8 so you can see that our aim down sight recoil and moving recoil does change as we move up to the slower firing rate. Right now we're at 10.0 seconds. I think the other one was 11 or 13. So it's a much slower weapon, as you'll see. But conversely, far more accurate, even with a very similar stability roll on this one. I think they both have around 40% for the two that I've got. But we're still doing now more damage and we're kind of carving through things at a little bit more lively of a rate. We do have still a small ammo pool, which I think really is what makes the infantry suffer a lot. You have to use in that same kind of concentrated burst fire mode. It is nice that you get a flashlight with the infantry, which is, I actually really like flashlights in this game because if you're doing lights out modifiers. But the Grya is that good middle ground here. You start to actually do some true damage into flak armor, really trying to punch through. They all have the same stopping power, min and max. It's worth noting on that. Um, but of course, therapist just ain't going to be it, son. So if I move over now to the Agrippina, we get a really good auto gun. And I'm not going to lie to you. I think that by and large, I would choose the Agrippina Mark I infantry auto gun over an MG-12 LAS gun or a bolter in the hands of a zealot if I'm not playing Damnation. Because the Bolter is more of an ammo dump weapon. You pull it out, you rip all 15 shots into a Bulwark or a Crusher or into a Horde that also has Maulers into it. You're going to use it as just a concentrated burst fire weapon. You're going to dump all 15 rounds as fast as you can. And the MG-12 Infantry Last Gun is an amazing gun. It's one of my favorite guns in the game. It's one of the best guns in the game. But I think in the hands of a Zealot in specific, it doesn't really thrive because you have to take into a consideration it is a single shot DMR style weapon. In the hands of a veteran, it is bananas. I love it on the vet. In the hands of a Zealot, I really think that the Agrippina infantry here really, really shines true. And a lot of this comes down to the damage profile. We have uh, 75 to 105 here, a lot of damage to an unarmored and infested. Our ammo is now much smaller with 15 to 35 and 120 to 280 in our clip and ammo respectively. I know it's a magazine. Stability here also changes with aim down sights and our mobility with moving spread also changes. So we get a much punchier weapon, a much slower fire rate now at 7.69 nice um, uh, per second with a much higher base damage. And it's a much more satisfying punchier weapon. I'm really clearing through things in much less shots. So hence, of course, the smaller uh, ammo, right? But I mean, I can almost take out one of these guys per shot, which if I shoot in the head, obviously I'm gonna, which is nice. It does make it though, so I need the perk of unarmored damage on the infantry auto gun for it to really shine true in damnation so I can be popping through these guys without having to worry about spending more than one bullet on them. This also shines through for stuff like dread gunners, which do need that. A big boon here though, that this weapon is, would really thrive in the hands of the zealot is using the zealot's alt. I can alt and then I'm doing 100% penetration that entire time. So even a crusher, I can take a crusher out with one clip on a zealot. That makes this gun a really nice mid to long range gun where I can threaten into snipers if I need to, but also do a minor amount of board clear with it and kind of clear the way out for me to then rip out my gun, my weapon and start carving and slicing stuff. Now, obviously I'm showing this to you on a, uh, on a, uh, <laughs> a veteran, but still the fact remains, if I use the alt on this gun, I'm going to be able to do far more damage with it as a, uh, zealot with just that high penetration, the good damage amount and the okay 
perfect ammo pool. You'll be looking for a lot of ammo with the uh, the Agrippina one, but still you'll be doing the most damage, the best damage of any of the infantry guns. Moving into the headhunters, we're actually going to start with the Agrippina rather than end with it, because the Agrippina has the slowest firing rate at 5.7, but of course, as always, the highest amount of damage, with its interval from 112 to 157. Now we have three different types of headhunters the Agrippina, then two different marks of the Vrax. We're going to compare the Agrippina and Mark III Vrax because they are both burst fire headhunters. Then we're going to compare the other Vrax, which is a single fire headhunter on its own. And just kind of, kind of talk about them in the same overall umbrella at least. But when we look at the damage profile for armored and infested, it's the same as far as the percentage max and minimums it could be. They're both, for both the Vrax and the Agrippina, uh, burst fire they have the same stability values here are going to change for the ads portion of it of course that's kind of the par for the course because this is a dmr rifle uh, the hip fire and hip fire moving recoil are the same for its actual intervals remember for the aim down sight the higher the number the worse it is with my staggeringly beautiful 21 percent stability roll this is also a super bad um, agrippina headhunter so keep that all in mind um, it of course has very terrible uh, aim down sight but the intervals too it can get far lower than the Vrax on both ADS and ADS moving recoil so it'll be a little bit tighter of a shot the spread too is better on the Vrax than it is on the Agrippina so you have that kind of trade-off there and the sway itself matches with the Vrax mobility is roughly the same um, I think the big difference here was in um the aim down sight moving recoil is better here than it is in the Vrax because the hit fire moving recoil and the aim down sight moving recoil are the same number for the Vrax. As far as 18.3 to 11.12, it would be 18.3 to 11.12 on the Vrax versus the Agrippina here says 10.6 to 6.9. Meaning when you're moving down and aiming down sight, you actually have a little bit better uh, uh, mobility with the Agrippina versus that Vrax. Ammo pool though is uh, the exact same, 30 to 50 with 240 to 400 as uh, the actual ammo reserve. And stopping power is almost exactly the same. The biggest difference is in weapon stagger. So the actual uh, uh, Agrippina stopping power here is 14.2 to 15.9. Vrax we're looking at 5.5 to 9.7. So this gives you an idea here. This is a higher damage, more stagger, slower firing burst fire weapon that is really a kind of solid just take these burst fire shots and, and, and dish them out and you'll be able to do some damage. I personally think this is the worst of the headhunters. It's just too slow. And I, I mean, keep take it with a grain of salt. My stability roll is so terrible. So this gun does suffer from that. It does really great damage for what it does, right? Like if I really focus on him, it does a really good, a considerable amount of damage. But I think that the headhunter doesn't need that slow of a fire rate i think that the damage i can get and let me actually take a look at this we we, we didn't shoot at this guy you can see the carapace too I mean, again it's an auto gun i don't expect it to just kind of blow through carapace armor unless i'm playing as a zealot now switching this over to the vrax where's my trusty one it's right here we have all intents and purposes very similar stats the damage profile here is 100 to 140 on its ma min and max intervals uh agrippina by comparison was you're doing 112 to 157 which is less max damage per shot and your weapon stagger is lower remember your hit aim down sight moving recoil is worse here on the vrax and your stability for your aim down sights recoil and moving recoil in this portion um cannot be as low as it can be on the Agrippina. But you get a much faster, a lot tighter of a weapon in my opinion. And a much better sight picture. You're much more zoomed in too than the Agrippina. The, you saw the Agrippina was very zoomed out by comparison. And you're really just doing a, a very enjoyable amount of damage, I'm not gonna lie. And if I blitz this guy down pretty quick because I have a really good amount of ammo in quote unquote clip, again it's a magazine. And I'm able to really kind of blitz through things. It's just a, it's just enough of a fire rate increase to make it feel a lot stronger without it feel like it's being much less damage, right? When you look at the Columnus and the Graia in either the braced or the infantry section on that bottom rate of 
damage and highest rate of fire, you really just don't get a nice middle ground. And I feel like with the Vrax, it's just the right amount of fire rate and just the right amount of damage to feel good and to feel solid. Lastly, though, is our Vrax Headhunter that is a single shot that looks very oddly similar to the uh, um, Agrippina, right? It looks almost exactly like the Agrippina. <laughs> But we look at the damage profile. We're now doing 125 to 175, which is very similar to the Agrippinas. Let's look at that. There we go. 120. Oh, I, I looked at the wrong gun when I was looking at it a second ago. Um, it was 112 to 157 for the Agrippina. 125 to 175 for the Vrax. I, I was, man, this thing looks very similar. Looking at its damage value, we're doing 125 to 175, which is more damage than our Agrippina. Remember, this is now a single shot, semi-automatic. Uh, DMR style weapon. It is no longer a burst fire. So keep those things in mind because it's probably going to be make a little bit more sense why our damage is going to be a little bit higher. And for the rest of the kind of comparison points, we're going to look more at the uh, Vrax. For stability now, we're going to see hip fire recoil. Those things are going to be different. We're going to have less uh, hip fire recoil and moving recoil. Our ADS as well is going to go down substantially to 2.4 and 2.73 compared to the 3.28 and 2.99 of the Vrax uh, burst fire. Mobility as well. We're going to see a lot of different values here with hip fire and everything of that sort. Um, big thing too, obviously, is also aim down sight. Moving recoil are going to, they're both values are going to match. So, and both are of course better than the burst fire. Ammo pool, we're looking at 25 to 35 with 200 to 280. That compares to the 3050 uh, and 240 to 400 of the burst fire. And our stopping power has flak, carapace, and whatnot, all with the same exact max, minimum and max values of 73 to 129 or 57 to 105 in flak armor's case, so on and so forth. All three um, headhunters have the exact same intervals here. Now, our weapon stagger is going to be different weapon stagger for the burst shot is 5.5 to 9.7 you can see here our weapon stagger is now 6.8 to 13.6 so a, a step up in its damage rate of fire is down to 13.3 but again this is a semi-automatic weapon it is not a burst fire weapon what you get here is a very similar sight picture to our vrax 3 and a way higher damage amount you have to click a lot, of course, but you get a much higher damage amount. And this doesn't even have a particularly good damage roll. You do have a much smaller ammo pool, of course, but you're shooting a, a uh, single shot weapon, so it should be a little bit easier to kind of keep control of those shots. And it is nice, too, if you're playing as your veteran, that you get the ability to really just pop things, right? And it's good. It feels solid. I think the Vrax Headhunters are the way to go, especially with their most recent round of buffs and stability and a bunch of nice things that have happened in the most recent patch 1.0.25, whatever is that, whatever one we just had. And it feels good that both Vraxes feel like really strong weapons, and I enjoy the hell out of them. The weapon stagger is pretty nice, and you can get a lot of really good damage on, on target. If I can get this up still. But I think what really takes the cake here in this section is the Vrax 3. I think the Vrax 3 has just the perfect mix of damage per shot, rate of fire, ammo pool in reserve, and ammo and magazine. I think it's just the right amount to take advantage of all the running and gunning you're going to need to do in Damnation. You can feel still very punchy when it comes to dealing with anything. You've got a lot of damage that's coming out from each click of your of your mouse, so you don't really feel like missing one shot is going to be as detrimental to you as, say, the single shot. I don't mind a single shot weapon. like. The pistol, right? The pistol, I mean, I know if I'm shooting, I'm probably going to kill something. This, at least when I click the button once, I feel like I'm going to get a kill versus if I miss a shot on the single shot, I just got to click again. So 
and that's kind of goes without saying it's almost like a dumb sentence but still my point remains here that this is that i think that that really nice middle ground and i think the headhunter thrives in the hands of the veteran sharpshooter who can take extreme advantage of that nice ads that really good sight picture the alt that can just kind of keep things rolling here making me do tons of damage i mean i honestly feel that if the if the mg las gun 12 is for all intents and purposes, as far as, far as an all coming what an all comer style of uh, range weapon goes, it's probably the best one. Of course, yeah, the bolt gun's amazing at doing high amounts of burst damage, and you've got your plasma gun for just ripping things apart that have armor. But I think the infantry las gun is the most reliable, best range weapon in the game. Now, with all the improvements and everything that the headhunters have gotten, I think the Vrax Mark III headhunter does not uh, kick the MG-12 out of its place by any stretch of the imagination. But I think it now is a true contender that you don't need to run the MG-12 in damnation on a veteran and feel like that's like your min-max, right? I still think you could play with the Vrax 3 and, and have a really good time. I think the Headhunter is now one of my new favorite weapons to use with the veteran alongside my Balls Out, Bananas Out stub revolver, which I also really, 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 really love. So that's our breakdown now of each of the three. Let me go through some stuff about blessings and my concluding thoughts on the uh, auto guns. Let's talk about the blessings here for our braced auto guns. You don't get a whole ton, right? You get six to take advantage of. And stuff like Fire Frenzy are really going to be nice. Even though Fire Frenzy had its bug fixed, it's still a pretty good one, which gains power increase against enemies or nearby enemies for 1.75 seconds after killing an enemy at close range. You're using a braced auto gun, you're going to be in that close range, so you might as well take advantage of it. Death Spitter also is a nice one to kind of work in conjunction with this because you're going to get a pretty massive power spike at rank one of both you're looking at a nine percent power spike uh, up to a total max of 16 and a half percent if you're using both with each close range kill hit and run is really nice for giving you some immunity um, and immunity just like ghost is very nice to give you some way to get a little bit more reliability or a little bit more defensiveness out of each gun terrifying barrage is going to be nice if you have the uh, Grya or Columnus auto guns. I wouldn't want to use it on my Agrippina, which has so much. Um, it does not have collateral anymore, so that that suppression isn't as as key. I would steer clear of it. I think really Death Spitter, Fire Frenzy, or Hit and Run are the three I would kind of go with when it comes to the brace guns. Um, of course, you have for the Torrent, which is the same one as the uh, your Grya and your Columnus versus Rapid Fire is your um, Agrippina. Moving over to our auto gun infantry style blessings we have some more to take advantage of but not a lot of them are good in fact most of them are terrible run and gun strip down raking fire i just they're too situational i would steer clear of them and any of them that say stuff like this damage on second and third shots in salvo steer clear second and third shots in a salvo that means you have to only fire three round bursts to take advantage of this don't even touch it same thing too with punishing salvo second and third shots in a salvo don't even do it don't even do it now, of course, you can't choose. The game's going to do it for you until crafting is fixed. So really, you're looking at Fire Frenzy again and Death Spitter. They're the only two reliable ones that you can really kind of um, use to get additional um, power out of. And they're within 15 meters, so you're still probably going to want to stay around that area anyway. So those are your really your big ones. You can do Dum Dum if you want. But that's close range damage on repeated hit stacks five times. You're looking at a max here of 5% to uh, what? 10 some odd damage so i i what 12.5 damage i i don't know if i'd really want to go that route with dum dum but like i said you can't really choose terrifying barrage i wouldn't use it either because i'm not having to require i'm having to rely on on suppressing things and it's just not how that the auto gun infantry works now with our headhunters both the burst fire and the versatile which is the single fire shot we have the same style of blessings but we have a lot more and your biggest one is going to be opening salvo, especially for your single shot, because this is going to give you a max 15% power on salvo's first shot, which is the first shot that you're going to shoot, which is a single shot. So it doesn't matter. That actually is like the only time I want a really good salvo. Um, what's it called? Uh, a blessing is right here. It can work very well in the in the burst shot because it's still like a two shot burst. So it's going to be take it's going to take just as much advantage of it. You're just not going to get on that second shot as much. So I do like this one quite a bit. Ghost is very good for giving you some defensive characteristics here, right? Immune to range attacks for half to full second on a weak spot hit, not a crit. 
relying on crits can be kind of a little funky. So I would think after that, you would look at stuff like surgical, two to 5% crit chance while aiming, build stacks over time, stacks five times. So you're looking at a max of 25% crit chance just by simply aiming down your sight. It's a very nice, good compliment, especially to the single shot, uh, who's also gonna probably possibly be taking advantage of opening solvo. Again, we cannot choose these things until crafting is in the game. So things like headhunter and deadly accurate are definitely not bad. I think deadly accurate's Two is really good with veteran because additional damage on crit weak spot hits you're already doing additional damage to weak spots and it's very easy to get lots of reliable crits as a veteran so i still think deadly accurate is a very good one i just think probably opening salvo and surgical are very good all comer style blessings that are always going to give you a really good advantage uh, between the eyes is a good one too for clearing suppression but I think I'd prefer Ghost for the, just the outright immunity. And Crucian Roulette 2 is also great. It's not terrible like it was. Like, uh, not terrible. It was never terrible. It's not godlike like it was before, but it's still pretty good. This gives you that crit chance for each empty chamber in your weapon. You could stack Surgical with Crucian Roulette if you'd wish to really get tons of crit chance as you're aiming down sight, right? Because you're going to be aiming, shooting the re remainder of your clip, gaining more crit chance, and gaining more crit chance as you aim as well. So a lot of cool things to be considered there. But those are just the blessings I wanted to kind of go over at a high level well with all that being said it kind of comes down to how do the auto guns really stack up to the competition how are they compared to the last guns the bolters and i think it really kind of depends upon which one you're looking at right the infantry last gun i think is a really good middle ground for a zealot giving them a really nice mobility um, and a really good firing platform that they can take advantage of without being locked down to a crap ammo clip that you get from your bolter, which you expel and takes nine years to reload, or the kind of um, single target shot of the MG-12 LAS gun, which while good, still kind of limits their mobility. I think the infantry is that right nice sweet spot. But when you take a look at stuff like the braced auto gun, you still get auto guns that act very similar to say a shredder auto pistol but the braced agrippina really shines in the hands of a veteran that can take advantage of basically keeping their alt up the whole time and ripping through things it's a very fun way to use it and lastly our headhunters which just recently got their biggest uh, uh balance really feel really good again they did not before the agrippina i still wouldn't touch but still both the vrax headhunter auto guns i think are now very strong contenders for rivaling if not supplanting with some sort of really cool awesome blessing and modifier combination god roll the mg12 last gun so if you finally wanted to play the auto guns which i think i think the way that they feel feels Good, right you have a heavier punchier kinetic weapon that kind of feels like you're just really unloading like your Arnold Schwarzenegger right like in, in the movie uh, uh commando like you're a funny guy Sully like I, I love that damn movie and you get that with the braced auto guns you get that with all the auto guns as a whole is this really punchy weapon but I think that the infantry auto guns still need a balance pass. I still think that they need more ammunition to be particularly useful. And I think that the braced auto guns need a balance pass as well because both of those sets of auto guns feel out of place compared to the headhunters. The headhunters now feel very competent in what they can do. The infantry and the braced blur too much together. And I think that the braced auto guns need to have a higher suppression and a higher stagger damage uh, uh, role as more of a crowd controlling ranged weapon intended to keep things down and ducking in cover because there's just a bullet hose shooting over them. Give them more damn more ammo in magazine, more ammo in reserve, and allow me to just kind of shoot the hell out of stuff. Maybe not killing it, but just giving a ton of suppression and a ton of stagger. And for the infantry, give me a better amount of damage, not against not against carapace, because I don't expect this to be a carapace killing thing, with a reliable ammo amount. I think that's where you really struggle with a lot of the weapons in this game is that their ammo doesn't really stack up to the damage that they do. And I think just simply increasing one or the other doesn't fix the problem. I think balancing between the two is rarely where you strike the the the, the gold mine of both, right? Like, hey, if I just increase this clip size, well, magazine, by 20, it's 
going to really fix it. No, it really won't because I'm just going to spend just as much ammo. It's just no longer in the reserve. It's in the uh, uh, quote unquote clip. Or I'm just going to increase the damage. Like, okay, great, but I still have an ammo problem. So I think that just increasing both a little bit would put the infantry gun in a better place. I think the infantry gun is fun on the Zealot, but I'd rather use a lot of other guns on the Zealot to really take advantage of, of what it can do. I think using the alt with the infantry gun is really cool, but I shouldn't have to rely on that to really get the most out of it. So that's my kind of overall gist here on the auto guns. I think that they're coming to a much better place with all the balance patches, patches and tweaks and fun stuff. And I think that people are finally starting to get a use for them in a lot of different applications. And once we get access to crafting and can really fine tune and custom build out how our blessings look on our guns, we'll be able to really find a true spot for them in the quote unquote meta and where they thrive. Now, everything I've said in this video can be immediately dismissed if you are not playing solely on Damnation. If you're playing on Heresy, or if you're playing on whatever rank 3 is, have fun. All the auto guns are going to perform pretty damn well on those, as long as you're using them competently and not shooting them into tons of carapace armor. Things have much less health, it's a little bit easier for you to deal with those things, so have a blast. Don't feel like you have to get sweaty and min-max all these things too. I kind of crapped on the... Uh, Columnus braced auto gun, or no, 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 the Gryah braced auto gun. But if you enjoy using it, then that's the best gun for you. Use whatever gun you enjoy the most, regardless of what a Reddit post, a forum post, or YouTuber, what any of us say. It's whatever you get the most value and the most fun out of in this game, because that's what's crucial right now, especially as we wait for more and more content to hit the game and hopefully next week <laughs> whenever that's gonna happen but as always guys thank you so much for watching here today if you have any questions about the auto guns or you want to say hey i've tried this combination of blessings or perks or uh, uh build with this auto gun and it really 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 shines let it be known in the comment section below love to spread as much information as i can about this uh very fun but probably underused weapon in the game but as always thank you so much for watching here today have a good one and take care